Hello viewers, I am S.P. Basavraj, the author of Engineering Physics Textbook. I was serving earlier at Bangalore Institute of Technology as professor and head in the Department of Physics. I am now making this presentation in YouTube as a demonstration for conducting the experiment Determination of Dielectric Constant. I have split this presentation into three parts so that you can scan the timeline and choose that part in which you are interested. The first part deals with the concept and explanation of how the whole thing works. In the same part, the instrument is also described. In the second part, it is just how you make the connection and do the experiment. The third part is to know how you go about plotting the graph and evaluating the dielectric constant. Let us start off with the first part. Let's understand the experiment starting with a question. What is that we are doing in this experiment? We know a capacitor has two plates each made of a conducting material. It's a well-known fact in physics that the capacitance of a capacitor increases when a non-conducting material is introduced in between its plates. In electrical applications, a non-conducting material is normally used for the purpose of insulation. But when it is used for the purpose of increasing the capacitance of a capacitor, it is then referred to as a dielectric. In all other contexts, it is called insulator. If you use different dielectric materials, then the capacitance increases by different amounts. The amount of increase in the capacitance due to the introduction of a particular dielectric material depends on the value of its dielectric constant. That's why it's important to know the value of the dielectric constant while making capacitors of different capacitance values. In this experiment, we are finding out the dielectric constant of a dielectric material that's inside the capacitor given to you. That's the aim of the experiment. How the experiment is planned? Let's see. In the experiment, by using a battery, we electrically charge the capacitor via a resistor R and follow how the voltage V on the capacitor increases with time T. We follow this dependence till the voltage V becomes constant. We plot a graph of V versus T. The curve obtained is called charge mode curve which will be as shown in the figure. We disconnect the battery and then connect the capacitors to plates not directly but via the same resistor R which was there while charging. Then a charge flow takes place between the two plates due to which the voltage in the capacitor decreases. Again we plot a graph of voltage V versus time T for this case also but in the same graph that is plotted earlier. The curve obtained now is called discharge mode curve. The two curves intersect at a point which on time axis is denoted as T half the half time. What is this T half? T half is the time taken by the capacitor to either charge or discharge to half its maximum potential. By knowing the thickness D and the area A of the dielectric strip which is inside the capacitor, we can find out the dielectric constant by using the formula k equal to d times t half into 10 to the power of minus 6 whole thing divided by 0 0.693 epsilon naught a r. We will learn about this formula later. This is the plan we follow in the determination of dielectric constant. So we need the following materials to do the experiment. One, the given capacitor which has the dielectric material inside it. We are actually finding the dielectric constant value of this dielectric material. 2. A battery to charge the capacitor. 3. A resistor to control the current flow. 4. A charge discharge switch. 5. A timer to follow the voltage variation. 6. An voltmeter to measure the voltage across the capacitor. The basic circuit with which we can conduct the experiment is this. If the switch S is thrown up, 
the upper path becomes continuous and the lower path is disconnected. So the battery gets into the circuit connection with the capacitor. The capacitor gets charged and the voltmeter starts showing readings with increasing values. By throwing the switch yes down, not only the battery gets disconnected, a connection between the two plates via the resistor is also formed. Because of this plate to plate connection, discharging of the capacitor takes place and the voltmeter shows decreasing values. A timer shows the time taken while the charging or discharging keeps going. That's how the basic circuit functions. However, the working circuit is how we see it on the chassis. Let's understand the circuit and also the other details of the instrument. This is an instrument which is used to find the dielectric constant of the material lodged inside the given capacitor. It is a modified version of the basic circuit. Modification is done because it's required for the students to learn making circuit connections. For this sake, some components are kept somewhat separated from the circuit. They are number one, capacitor, number two, battery, number three, resistor, and number four, voltmeter. Another modification is, in addition to the switch yes, we need one more switch, namely the start halt timer switch in the circuit. Now let's observe the modified circuit on the chassis. The battery is inside the box. The charge discharge switch S1 and the timer switch S2 are on the box where they are marked. There are permanent internal connections between the points where we see continuous lines in the circuit. For example, from here to here and here to here, there are continuous lines. Hence, they are internally connected. But there will be no connections where there are gaps in the circuit. For example, here to here there is a gap and hence no connection. While making the circuit connections, the battery, the resistor, the capacitor and the voltmeter have to get connected into the circuit. Of course, by using the connectors. Between M and N, though a resistance mark R is shown, the resistor is not there below it inside the box. It has to be connected from outside the circuit. However, when you actually want to make this connection, a choice is made available so that you can choose any one from these three resistors and connect it to the circuit. In the same way, there is no capacitor already between S and T in the circuit. Again, in this case also, you can choose one among the three capacitors given above the circuit and connect it into the circuit. Likewise, the voltmeter is to be connected from above to the two terminals P and Q. This is the power card connecting the instrument to the mains supply. And switch on the instrument. This is the timer, which is actually a stop clock. It is controlled by the switch S2 and a reset button through internal connections. Now the timer is not running and it is showing zero reading. You see here three pairs of slots. Inside the instrument here, there are three resistors, each one connected between one pair of slots. As explained earlier, you need only one among these at a time when you run the experiment. When you may choose an other resistor for the next trial. The value of resistance of the resistor concerned is more on the chassis between the respective slots. Again, there are three pairs of slots here, but this time it is for the three capacitors C1, C2 and C3 with polarities marked. Polarities are marked because all of them are electrolytic capacitors. Each capacitor is connected between one pair of slots. Here also at a time, you need only one among them while conducting the experiment. Since the capacitors are electrolytic, the positive end of the capacitor must be connected to the positive side of the circuit. Positive side of the circuit means the circuit side which is connected to the positive pole of the battery. This is the voltmeter. Here also the polarity of connection to the circuit must be taken care of. That is 
positive terminal of the voltmeter be connected to the positive side of the circuit so on and so forth now let's observe the circuit between these two terminals x and y there is a battery of 5 volts at f here there is a switch s1 which helps us to choose between charging and discharging if the switch is up then the battery gets connected to the capacitor and the charging takes place if it is put down then f gets connected to d then the battery gets disconnected and also a connecting path is formed between the two plates of the capacitor which results in discharging the switch s2 operates between g and h we see it is now in halt position when it is put to start position g gets connected internally to h and it is so arranged in the instrument that the timer also begins to count simultaneously the timer stops counting automatically when s2 is switched to halt position its display becomes static and the reading it shows is the time elapsed in the interval between start and halt actions of the switch for the next measurement of time we need the timer to start from zero this is what we say as initialization it is done by pressing the reset button the timer returns to the zero reading the moment the reset button is pressed supposing you press the reset button while the timer is still running then the reading changes to zero it keeps showing zero as long as you hold the button pressed but it starts counting the instant you release the button it happens so because the switch s2 is still in running mode that's about how the instrument is now let's see in the second part how we are going to conduct the experiment first we make circuit connections and next we make the observations let's see how the circuit connections are made step by step number 1 keep the switch s2 in halt position and the timer at zero reading by pressing the reset button number 2 connect the battery number 3 there are three resistors i choose the middle one and connect it number 4 there are three capacitors i choose the first one and connect it number 5 connect the voltmeter but you must note down one thing here after connection if the voltmeter starts showing reading other than zero then take a connecting wire and touch its two ends to the two points s and t this short step is called shorting then the voltmeter reading jumps to zero take away the shorting wire with this the circuit connections are over and we are ready to conduct the experiment now let's see how the actual experiment is carried out the experiment has two parts one the charge mode studies and the other one the discharge mode studies you must keep in mind that the second part is a continuation of the first part first let's see how the observations are made in charge mode studies in charge mode studies there are only two steps number 1 s1 is switched upwards for charging mode number 2 switch s2 is put to start position and immediately the timer starts itself counting simultaneously then start noting down the voltage v at every 5 seconds in the charge mode studies part of the tabular column in the beginning the voltage increases fast but later it slows down it is because as per theory both the rise of voltage during charging and the fall of voltage during discharging there is an exponential dependence on time keep noting down the voltage values until v becomes constant that is till two consecutive readings are almost the same in the first decimal place note that the first reading in tabular column is obviously is v equal to 0 for t equal to 0 at the end of the first part the next part starts without a break don't change anything at the end of the charge mode studies next part is the discharge mode studies in this part there are three steps to be performed quickly one after the other press and hold the reset button quickly push the switch s1 downwards to discharge mode and immediately release the reset button if there is any delay in releasing the button then the part of discharge taking place during that period goes unaccounted which causes some error 
Now start noting down the voltage V at every 5 seconds in the discharge mode studies part of the tabular column until the voltage V becomes constant. That is till two consecutive readings are almost the same in the first decimal place. In this case, the voltage reading at t equal to 0 is the same as the last reading for a voltage in the charge mode studies. You may note down one thing here regarding the time intervals for noting the voltage. Now you know you do the experiment with your own choice of R and C. For some cases, it is better to note down readings at intervals of 5 seconds and in some cases at intervals of 10 seconds. How do you decide it? It all depends upon your choice on the combination of R and C. The rate at which the voltage in the capacitor changes depends on what is called RC time constant. If the value of the product RC is more, higher, then the rate of change of voltage V will, v will be slow. If RC value is small, then the rate of change is pretty fast. In the instrument shown, the values of C1, C2 and C3 are respectively 100 microfarad, 220 microfarad and 470 microfarad. Now, let's say you have chosen the second resistor and the third capacitor C3. Then you may better choose 10 seconds interval to record in the tether column. On the other hand, if you have chosen say first capacitor C1, and the second resistor, then the value of RC will be comparatively low and you would choose to record at 5 seconds interval. Now let's go to the third and the final part. Let's understand now how the dielectric constant is evaluated from the observations made so far. We plot a graph of voltage V versus T for the observations in the charge mode. The curve obtained from this plot is the charge mode curve. Next, we plot V versus T for the discharge mode observations in the same graph and get the discharge mode curve. The two curves are symmetric and they intersect at a point which on time axis is T half. We are given ready-made data on length L, breadth V and thickness D of the dielectric material that is inside the particular capacitor used in the circuit. Therefore, we get its area A by multiplying L and B. Finally, evaluate the value of the dielectric constant K of the material inside the capacitor we used in the experiment by substituting the values in the equation K equal to D times T half into 10 to the power of minus 6 whole thing divided by 0 0.693 epsilon naught A R where epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space and it has an assigned value of 8.854 into 10 to the power of minus 12 farad per meter. R is the value of the resistance used in the experiment. Note that the dielectric constant does not have any units. It's purely a number. Okay, that's all viewers. That's how you find K. I hope you like this presentation. Thanks for watching.